Hello children, I am Dr. Mrs. Pallavi Patnaik and I welcome you all to another interesting episode of EduSat. The topic for today is Air Pollution a Hidden Menace. Let me tell you, the topic is divisible into two specific parts and we will be covering all aspects about this specific topic which is Air Pollution a Hidden Menace. Now all of you would have a basic idea about what is air pollution. Children, air pollution is a phenomena that is caused by a variety of reasons. Now what are the reasons? Let's study. See here, you can see industrial, you can see industrial smoke, you can see the smoke given out by automobiles, you can see the varieties of sprays and DOs that we use. All of these give out irritable gases that are responsible for air pollution. Before we delve into the details of the chapter, let me give you a brief summary about what this air pollution chapter is all about. Now look at the first point. We cannot live without breathing even for a minute. All of us know that the air that we breathe is a mixture of gases. What is that mixture? It is nitrogen, oxygen, argon and carbon dioxide. Remember children, these are the mixture of gases that make up the air around us. If oxygen level is reduced and the irritating gases or the gases that are harmful in nature enter the atmosphere, the air is polluted. And when we inhale that polluted air, it leads to all kinds of respiratory disorders. Now, industries release a lot of smoke into the atmosphere. It is a known fact. We are a developing nation and we have a lot of industries. So, industries release a lot of smoke into the atmosphere as a result of which our environment is polluted to the highest degree. We respire that polluted air as usual and thus our lungs become inflated with that polluted air. Thermal power stations, they are also responsible for air pollution. How? Because they discharge a lot of smoke and ash. Cement, steel, ores, processing industries and chemical industries, remember children, these are also responsible for releasing toxic fumes and smoke into the atmosphere, thus contributing to air pollution to a large degree. Now, automobile exhausts, they also, they release a lot of pollutants in the atmosphere and what do these pollutants do? The level of pollution in metropolitan cities rises. Because they have a lot of vehicles plying in those cities. What are these vehicles? Buses, lorries, cars, two-wheelers and they are responsible for 60%. Pay attention here. 60% of the air pollution because of what reason? They release maximum carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So children remember, these are the factors in short that are responsible for air pollution. First, we have industrial pollutants. Then we have pollutants from thermal power stations, then we have automobile exhausts and then we have a variety of vehicles that release harmful gases into the atmosphere. All of these in combination are responsible for air pollution. Now, what are the impacts? We all know that air pollution is of a very harmful nature, but how does it impact the environment? How does it impact man as such? Let us study the causes one by one. The damage caused by air pollution is humongous. It is huge. And what is it? Flowers, vegetable crops, trees, cattle, they are all highly affected. All of them are affected by air pollution. Now, air pollution also affects rubber tires in automobiles and fine buildings. Recently, children, all of you would have heard how acid rain and air pollution has been affecting monuments like Taj Mahal. So, here we see that air pollution is also responsible for affecting rubber tires on automobiles and fine buildings. Next, air pollution has a damaging effect on human body. We all know that. Recent news you would have heard children, how in Delhi and how in other metros people are suffering. It causes eye irritation, scratchy throat. Respiratory disorder, this is very important. Respiratory disorder, eye irritation and scratchy throat and much direct harm is caused by air pollution. How? Because lot of harmful gases like carbon dioxide, they trap the radiation from the sun from which the atmosphere becomes warmer 
and this leads to a phenomena which is called as global warming. Remember children, this often comes as a short question during your exams. What is global warming? So the answer is harmful gases like carbon dioxide trap the radiation from sun from which the atmosphere becomes warmer and the phenomena results in global warming. Now, what do scientists do? Automatically, they will be worried. So, scientists are worried about the widespread use of CFC. What is CFC? Chlorofluorocarbon. Children, all of you, I hope, have your notebooks and pencils out. So, whenever I dictate a particular term, please make it a point to note it down. So, what is CFC? Chlorofluorocarbon which is thought to be harmful to the ozone layer in the earth's atmosphere. Now, this chlorofluorocarbon is responsible for damaging the atmosphere of the earth. Now, another concern is acid rain. All of you would have heard about normal rain, but what is this acid rain? Acid rain is comprised by gases which are released from factories and they dissolve in the atmospheric air and damage trees, crops, buildings, rivers, drinking water. Acid rain in fact is so harmful that it will damage everything on which it falls. What does it do? It washes away the nutrients from the soil. After that, trees will become leafless. What else? Animals and birds living in forests also die. This is how acid rain affects the environment around us. It also irritates the sensitive tissues in the human body. What are the tissues that undergo irritation? Eye tissue, lung tissue and your skin. Some wounds or lesions are also caused on your skin because of these acid rains. Buildings are also affected by acidic smog. What is smog? A mixture of smoke and fog. Children note down. What is smog? A mixture of smoke and fog. Well, what can you do? What can one do to control such type of pollution? We have preventive measures, we have dispersal measures and we have collective measures. What do you mean by preventive measures? Preventing measures refer to the fact of changing the components of the fuel that we use. Dispersal measures include raising the height of a smokestack. And collective measures include, we have to design modern equipment to trap these pollutants before they escape into the atmospheric air and pollute the atmosphere. So, these are the initial measures that have to be taken up by the people, by the government to ensure that your air that you breathe is healthier and cleaner. Now, let us have a summary about the brief approaches. See. Industrialized nations have some type of legislation, they have some type of laws to control air pollutions. These pollutants, they are carried by wind from one country to another. Acid rain originated in USA, but it affected Canada. And though it also originated in Britain, it was seen causing damages in various parts of France and Sweden. Now, coming on to the next protocol, air quality programs have been about improving the quality of air in many areas. Burning low sulfur coal, this is one. Oil in factories has lowered pollution in many cities. Automobiles have been redesigned. They have been remodified and equipped with devices that will change the toxic gases into harmless substances before they are released into the atmosphere. Now, what can we lastly do? We can do some research. Okay. Lot of scientists are doing research and on um, basic ways on how the pollution can be reduced and how the air that we breathe is not polluted with irritable gases. Before we started this chapter, all I wanted to tell you about was we have the causes of air pollution, we have the approaches to air pollution, we have the impacts of air pollution. Now that we have understood what air pollution can do, we can discuss certain important question answers that are of relevance from examination point of view. Now these are very short questions that I would like to discuss. So just look at the first question. What was the accident that took place at Bhopal in 1984? Now I am sure all of you would be having your textbooks with you. So look into your textbooks and pay attention to this slide. 
What accident took place in Bhopal in 1984? There was a tragic accident that took place in Bhopal in 1984 in which glasses were released, gases were released from Union Carbide Factory that resulted in disabling almost 4,000 people in Bhopal. Okay. Now, why, what is an industrial accident? Like I said, there was an accident, but what is an industrial accident? Accidents are called industrial accidents because deadly gas from a chemical plant operated by Union Carbide escaped into the atmosphere. So, what happened in Bhopal in 1984, there was a factory called as Union Carbide which released a large quantity of poisonous gas into the atmosphere and this resulted in disabling thousands of people in that specific area. Now, what were the tragic consequences? What happened then? Tragic accident caused almost disabilities in 4000 local residents. They were becoming blind. They were losing their vision and it also damaged a large section of the city's population. People became blind, they became disabled and a lot of the city's population underwent harm. Now, how is air important to man? What is the basic requirement of air? We all need air for breathing. So, what will be your answer? We breathe air which is most important for living. Now, what are the major sources of contamination in the human body? How does contaminated air enter your human body? The air that we breathe in is polluted with a variety of toxic gases and these toxic gases enter into your lungs. So, majorly we breathe in these contaminants. Now, what is the composition of air? In the first slide, I told you children that air is a combination of various gases. What is that combination? It is a mixture comprising of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 1% argon and 0.03% CO2 or carbon dioxide. And when is air said to be polluted? The next question, look at question number 7. When is air said to be polluted? When toxic gases enter the atmospheric air and then the level of oxygen reduces, air is said to be contaminated in nature. What fuels do industries use? We spoke of industrial accidents in the previous slide. Now, we will study about what fuels do industries use. Most of the industries that we see in modern times, they use coal, coke, furnace oil. So, what are the three important fuels that the industries use? They are coal, coke and furnace oil. Now, how does the smoke released from industries affect man? I told you when air becomes irritable and mixed up with poisonous gases, it becomes contaminated. We breathe in these contaminants and we in turn suffer from many kinds of health issues. So, the industries, they burn various fuels. What do they burn? They burn coke, furnace oil and they burn it along with heat. As a result, what do we see? There is production of heat too and this smoke which is produced by these industries, it will get mixed up with the atmospheric air. Once it gets mixed up with the atmospheric air, it starts polluting it. Now, what do thermal power stations do and how do they cause more pollution? This is another important question. Children, remember, whatever I am discussing under the discussion part, these are all short questions related to air pollution and you may get these in the form of MCQs or you may get these in the form of one line answers. So, what do thermal power stations cause and how do they support air pollution? Thermal power stations release high amounts of smoke and ash. So, what do we see here in this particular point? Thermal power stations, they are responsible for releasing a lot of smoke and ash and this in turn contaminates the air that we breathe. Now children, 
we studied why thermal power stations they cause air pollution we will go on to the next slide now and see what they contain the next slide answers other important questions like why are industries harmful for us and what are those industries certain industries like cement ore industries and steel industries these industries children remember they are very harmful for us and responsible for air pollution of the atmosphere now why are automobiles increasing on roads this is also another important question these questions are important children so please pay attention why are automobiles increasing on roads the answer is simple the population of our country is continuously increasing because of the increasing population we have a large demand for automobiles and vehicles and so we see a large number of two wheelers and four wheelers plying on our indian roads okay now what is the next question how do these automobiles contribute to air pollution what do these automobiles do that result in the pollution of our atmosphere look at the answer automobiles produce maximum carbon monoxide this is important children remember what do automobiles do they are responsible for producing carbon monoxide and this carbon monoxide when it is released into the atmospheric air is responsible for almost 60% of the air pollution now what are the effects of air pollution on vegetable crops and trees we had heard that air pollution affects a lot of things in the atmosphere now let us study the effects of air pollution on vegetable crops and trees what does it do the acid rain that is a result of air pollution it helps in what does it do it helps in damaging or poisoning of vegetable crops and trees as a result of which it produces a total harmful effect on the ecosystem now how are buildings affected by polluted air all of you would have seen in a recent news that taj mahal was affected by acid rain and air pollution now what does it do due to harmful pollution buildings get discolored and they become shabby the surfaces of these buildings they may start deteriorating what is deteriorating becoming more and more degraded because of air pollution so what did we understand in this particular slide we understood that air pollution affects vegetables crops trees and it also affects buildings now what are the health problems caused by polluted air all of you would have seen that uh, in the recent news there was a particular instance about children in delhi being affected by air pollution it caused a lot of respiratory distress so what will be the particular answer for this question inhaling polluted air not only causes respiratory distress but it also causes severe health issues now what are the health issues they are irritation of sensitive tissues of the eyes and lungs and it can also cause lesions wounds and irritability of the skin to a certain extent now this is another slide which will tell us about the effects and impact of air pollution what are the questions in this particular slide let us go on to the question 17 how is air pollution responsible for increasing temperature this is an important question which is asked almost in all your exams so pay attention how is air pollution responsible for increasing temperature the answer to this particular question is air pollution releases large amounts of harmful gases what are those gases carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and these gases trap the radiation that reaches the earth from the sun now what happens once this radiation is trapped it results in increasing the temperature and the increase in temperature leads to global warming okay so this is how air pollution is responsible for raising the 
temperature of the atmosphere. Nowadays, a lot of research has been done on how global warming is harmful and how it can affect the atmosphere or the ecosystem as a whole. Now, what harm can a refrigerant do? In the first slide, children, I told you about chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs. So, let us see what harm can these refrigerants do. Now, refrigerants like chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs, they damage the atmospheric layer. Now, what happens once the atmospheric layer is damaged? You will see that the layer that protects the environment and people from harmful kinds of radiation that undergoes deterioration. And these substances are widely used which is responsible for damage of the environment. Children, I am sure all of you would have heard about the term ozone umbrella. So, what do the CFCs do? These CFCs are mostly responsible for damaging the ozone umbrella as a result of which it damages the ecosystem as a whole. Now, looking at the next question, this question is also very important from examination point of view. What is that question? What is acid rain? When rainfall gets mixed with oxides of sulfur and nitrogen. Remember children, when your ordinary rainfall, it gets mixed with sulfur oxide and nitrogen oxide. It will create a poisonous substance and this poisonous substance is referred to as acid rain. Remember children, this acid rain is very harmful in nature. Okay? And a lot of harm has been done because of such rains to our ancient heritage buildings, to vegetables, crops, to our entire ecosystem as a whole. Before I go on to the next continuation of the chapter, I would like to summarize this entire chapter in short. Whatever I have discussed, I would like to summarize. From the very beginning, we discussed air pollution is a result of entry of toxic gases into the atmosphere. What are these toxic gases and from where are they released? The source of these toxic gases are mostly industrial pollutants and the smoke that is released from vehicles. Now, what are the industries that are harmful? Industries like cements, mining, ore, steel industries are harmful to us. And how are vehicles harmful? Vehicles are harmful because they release carbon monoxide into the atmosphere which is responsible for 60 percent of the air pollution around us. Now, what are the other two impacts that are related to air pollution? One is acid rain and the other is global warming. What do you mean by acid rain and global warming? Acid rain refers to the fact that when poisonous gases are intermixed with the rain when it reaches the atmosphere, it results in the creation of a poisonous watery substance which falls down in the form of acid rain. And what is global warming? When harmful radiations are trapped within the atmosphere and they cannot escape to the outer environment, it releases, it results in the in endangering of the environment. How does it result in endangering of the environment? It increases the temperature of the environment as a whole and this results in global warming. Now, another factor that we studied about is industrial accident. What is an industrial accident? Industrial accidents are those that are caused as a result of vehicular emissions and industrial emissions. What are uh, vehicular emissions and industrial emissions? Vehicular emissions may refer to the vehicles used by the industries and industrial emissions refer to release of poisonous gases into the atmosphere. Now, what was the most prominent case? The case of Union Carbide in 1984 in Bhopal released a lot of poisonous methane gas into the atmosphere which resulted in disabling, crippling almost 4000 people and a lots of people lost their vision. So, we see how damaging air pollution can be. 
Now, air pollution may also have other effects. What are the effects on your human body? Air pollution can damage your lungs, air pollution can damage your eyes, your throat and it can also damage your skin. Now, how can it damage your respiratory system? It can cause respiratory distress. Once you inhale lots of toxic gases, you will experience breathing problems. Your skin gets damaged. How does your skin gets damaged? It will result in skin irritability, skin lesions or skin wounds. Your trachea, your pharynx, they are all infected as a result of the poisonous and toxic air which you take in. So what has been done with regards to this particular problem? A lot of preventive measures, collective measures and dispersive measures have been taken up. We can reduce the components of the fuel that we use in factories. We can reduce the amount of vehicular emission by reducing the number of vehicles that we ply on and we can also help in reducing things like burning of uh, substances that produce harmful gases and manufacturing various equipments in vehicles that will convert toxic gases into harmless products. So children, this will be continued in the next chapter. I hope you have understood the chapter well. We will go on to the part 2 in the next session. Thank you all of you.